City Council business session for April 15, 2019 is now in session. Sue, when you have a chance, a roll call, please. <laughs> Everybody get their taxes in? Yeah, get them duly stamped. Okay, good, good. Mr. Mayor, all present, duly noted. Thank you very much. All right, uh, Pledge of Allegiance, please. All right, first item of business, a uh, presentation. Mr. Dane Finley and his flag presentation. Step up to the microphone and the button on the right. Okay, um, so my name is Dane Findley, um, and this whole thing started as my senior project, um, but it's really kind of grew into something a lot bigger than that, uh, in my opinion. So thank you for, for I don't know if this is gonna work. Could you go a slide forward, please? Thank you. Um, so to start with a little bit about me, I'm a senior at Newburgh High School. Um, I'm born and raised in Newburgh. I'm a fourth generation Newburgh resident, so my great, -great or my great grandparents moved here. Um, and my family's been here ever since. Um, I got interested in flag design after seeing a TED talk about city flag design specifically. And a lot of times, there's not a lot of detail in them. There's not a lot of thought put into them. And so overall, they're kind of poor. Uh, but I think it's something that's really important and we should take pride in. I've been graphic designing for the last four years of high school. Um, so I spent a lot of time in the classroom and outside of it using Adobe Illustrator to create things, you know, um, like logos and things like that. Um, and then also, I really want to be able to inspire other teens to get involved in local government. It's something that's really important. And for me, my hometown is so important to me that I want everyone to really take pride in their hometown and get involved in it whenever they can, you know, especially when it includes their talents, like graphic design. Uh, and then lastly, I want to thank uh, the city council and uh, Mayor Rick Rogers for letting me come and give my presentation. And I want to thank my friends and family for coming to support me. Uh, and it really means a lot. Um, next slide, please. So this is our current uh, city flag according to the US flag registry, I believe. Um, and I've never seen it. Um, I've never seen it anywhere outside. I've never seen it in any buildings. I've heard that the, my, <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think that that's a little bit of a problem. I think that a city flag should be something that we can be able to fly and take pride in. And honestly, I don't blame uh, us for not really flying this flag. Um, Next slide, please. So there's a lot of areas of improvement for that flag, but first I want to introduce a guy named Ted Kay. Um, he graduated from Stanford University with an MBA in 1979. He's the secretary of the North American Vexillological Association. So vexillology is actually the study of flags. So he's the secretary of that organization, which includes Canada and the United States. Um, he's the chairman and editor of the Portland Flag Association. He lives in Portland, and he runs that uh, once monthly uh, Portland Flag Association meetings. Um, in 2013, he was selected for the Nation of Fiji's National Flag Committee. They decided they wanted to uh, design a new flag, and so they flew him out, and uh, he helped out with that. He's designed several city flags across the U.S. upon request. So he was I was talking to him, and he was telling me, you know, some city in Maine where he's not from, called him up and asked if he would help them design a flag, so he flew out and helped him do that. Uh, probably most importantly, he wrote Good Flag, Bad Flag, which according to the North American Vexillological Association is compiled from the expert wisdom of over 20 vexillologists and has become a classic resource for those wishing to design or redesign a flag. So I used that book uh, very closely, uh, and I tried to come up with something that um, follows all the rules of vexillology. Um, and all, as well, he continues to be a resource for high profile publications such as the New York Times. Uh, when I met him, he was telling me about how like two days before the meeting, the uh, New York Times called him so that they had a picture 
of somebody wearing a, a pin with a flag on it and they couldn't really figure out what it was so they wanted his opinion on what flag he thought it was. Uh, next slide please. So in Good Flag, Bad Flag, he goes into the five principles of flag design. Keep it simple, use meaningful symbolism, use two or three basic colors, and that means off of like the standard color set, no lettering or seals, and be distinctive. Next slide, please. Thank you. So we're back again to our current flag. First of all, there's writing on it. Um, and for some reason, Newburgh is in bold and City of isn't, but that doesn't really matter. Um, next slide, please. So this is the areas of improvement. One of the biggest problems with text is that it can't be read from a distance. So if we have a big flag and it's flying far away, if you have letters on it, you might as well be able to read them. And as well, on the reverse side of the flag, it's going to be gibberish. So half the people that see it won't be able to tell what it is. And then a quote, if you have to write the name of the city on the flag, the flag is not doing its job. On top of that, it looks dated in my opinion. It's unsymmetrical. The pink and the red, you know, kind of don't really go together well, in my opinion. And the pink is kind of off the wall, you know, in flag designs, just because it's not part of that normal, normal color set. And um, it, it's not distinct enough, in my opinion. Um, it looks like it could be the city flag of any small city across the United States. And when you see it, I feel like a lot of people wouldn't recognize it. And I found this, which was a letter written to the uh, editor of um, some flag registry website. Um, so according to former city, former city recorder Norma Alley in 2009, the city doesn't have any history behind our flag other than the creation was initiated by a previous mayor in the 90s. The earliest date we can find an order for is 1997. So that to me says we don't really have a lot of symbolism. We kind of just cobble something together because some mayor wanted one and that became our flag. Uh, next slide, please. So this is some pictures from, I actually went to a Portland Flag Association meeting. The picture on your left is a, a screen grab from their publication called the, um, the uh, Vexiloid Tabloid. So that's kind of their small publication and they take pictures of each other and put them in their little tabloid. Um, so there I am uh, presenting my concepts for a new flag to this group of old Vexilologer <laughs> Sorry. And then on the right is me and Ted K. So I got to meet him. I showed him my flag design. He loved it. He gave me some pointers. And he loved it. So, And uh, he's kind of the name in flags. I mean, people like to say he wrote the flag on, or the book on flags. Excuse me. Um, so next slide, please. So this is my proposed new flag. Um, you have a whole new camellia logo, which was made by taking an actual picture of a camellia. I bisected it into quarters. I just uh, outlined some of the leaves on one quarter of it and then copy and pasted it around a circle so it's all symmetrical. And then you have one green wavy line going through the middle. Uh, next slide, please. So the advantage of the new flag. I'll start with another quote. In every bad flag, there's a good flag trying to get out. So this flag pays homage while still being new. It's fresh. It's not too big of a leap from the old one because we still have the camellia symbolism in there. But I just kind of took that idea, made it look fresher, took advantage of the technology that we have today because I'm assuming it's a lot different than in 97. Um, and again, the camellia is really important because it was adopted as a, our city flower in 1949. It's unique. It's distinct. You, when people see it, they can say, oh, OK, that's Newburgh's flag. Um, it also symbolizes Newburgh's rich history and bright future, as well as demonstrates the city's geographical position. So when I was designing it, a lot of times flags will pay homage to, you know, geographical position of the city, state, country, whatever. So the camellia is growing out of the center of the wavy line. The wavy line is supposed to represent the river that goes through our town, the Willamette. And then Newburgh's a great place to grow, so it's almost as if the flower's growing out of the center. And then the white on either side, as well as keeping the white field from the old flag, represents our position in between two mountain ranges, the coastal and the Cascade ranges, uh, with the white mountain tops. Um, and I think that this new flag, uh, should we choose to change it, um, will allow for citizens to be proud of and display a handsome flag that will unite a great city. So I think a flag should really be able to bring people together. It should be something that we fly proudly and really get people interested in our city 
and kind of show what we're all about. Uh, and that's it. So thank you. All right. Be before we let you go, so you're a senior. What are you? What are you doing next year? I'm going to Central Oregon Community College. Nice, nice, uh, very good. Anything graphic design in your future? You think? Um, I'm thinking about possibly trying to run some freelance graphic design to kind of earn some money on top of it. Very good, awesome. Are you graded on this uh, on this project, the senior project? Uh, I yeah, I was. Okay. Um, I if you if you don't get an A, I'll be really really <laughs> surprised. I'll tell you that. So that was that's awesome. All right, questions, folks. Anybody? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Dane, well, thank you, right? And thank you to your buddies for showing up as well, right? Um, very good. We, we appreciate it, and we will uh, take it under advisement. How's about that? Sounds great. I have a question. Sure. How do you go about getting the flag changed to a new flag? Yes. Did you learn anybody? that? Staff. You decided. You take a vote, get some designs in, and say this is our new flag. Now, Dane, would you be opposed to say we had a, con a contest in Newburgh to uh, design our new flag, and we um, could, that would be well, obviously an entry that's uh, already done? Uh, yeah, um, that's that's great as long as you know if people feel like they have an opportunity to give their input. Um, I would like to maybe help pick the flag if I could be on some sort of right. you know panel for that. Yes, that that's a deal. You are on a flag selection committee. We, All right. we will we will if we do create one you will be there. That'd be awesome. All right. All right. Thank you. All right, anybody else? All right, thank you. All right? Thanks. <laughs> you know, Dane, could I ask you just one one other thing if you don't mind? The Sort of your, the, the symbolism that you have, if you could write that up in a paragraph or two for your design and what it explains so we don't, so we don't forget it, that would, be, that would be awesome, okay? Thanks so much. All right, next, um, not, not nearly as fun as flag design, but we do have capital improvement <laughs> program presentation. Karn, no, I'm not, not saying it that way, just, you know, capital, you know, flags are pretty fun, but so are capital improvements, yes. So, th yes, they are, all right. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, members of the council. So I'm here to talk about the capital improvement plan uh, proposed for fiscal year uh, 2019 to 2020. Um, so something to keep in mind, the capital infrastructure needs um, are, uh, oh, excuse me, identified through a variety of sources, including master plans that the city's adopted, city council goals, operational needs, regulatory obligations, um, we work very closely with Public Works Operations and Maintenance to complete the identified projects. And um, the projects on the list implements planning, design, construction of the capital infrastructure needs of the city by prioritizing based on the analysis of, of the master plans and other studies in combination with availability of funding. Obviously, that's a big deal. Um, the scheduled projects that um, you'll have that are in the CIP document itself um, are not intended to be a spending commitment where they're included to show a proposed plan for the projects and um, at the time that we come back with the actual fiscal year project we'll reevaluate and make sure that that's still the priority that the city uh, believes is the right thing to do so an update on the fiscal year 1819 projects I'm not going to read this all to you this is uh, a list of the projects most of them are completed or underway there's have been a couple that have been postponed and I'll talk about them when we get to that those actual slides specifically um, and feel free to ask any questions as we're going along or wait till the end either way um, so the, the the first project in particular that I wanted to talk about is the 800 block of Wynuski. Um, it's a stormwater project. The current pipe and outfall has severely eroded the area on the um, bottom of the slope. And uh, so what we're going to do is extend the pipe down the slope um, to reduce that erosion. Um, and we'll be looking to spend um, $90,000 in next fiscal year. Uh, 
inflow and infiltration. I know this group has heard a lot about this over the last several years. Um, so inflow and infiltration is when water that is not wastewater enters um, into those wastewater pipes and then travels down to the treatment plant for um, to be treated in the wastewater treatment plant. This can be from groundwater, this can be um, from leaky joints, uh, thing, intrusions into the pipe, um, cross connections. Sometimes storm drainage lines get um, put into the wastewater line, um, although it shouldn't. We do not have a combined sewer um, system in the city of Newburgh. We do, our pipes are separated. I'm, I only mentioned that because somebody who'd been in the city for a long time didn't realize that. Um, so, but what happens is when the stormwater goes down to the wastewater treatment plant, that means the treatment plant has to treat it, um, even though it, it is not necessary to treat it to the level that we have to. So, and, which means we have to have bigger pipes, bigger systems, bigger pumps. So the idea is to reduce those peak flows and, um, and it can delay capacity related pipeline projects. So we've worked on the North Springbrook Basin for several years because we had overflows in that location. And with all the rain that we've had in the last year, we have not had any overflows in that location. So we're seeing uh, benefits from that. Um, we're working on 2nd and 3rd uh, Street and Church Street this year, along with 6th Street, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. Um, right now, we're focused on mostly the downtown area and the projects that we need to do before we pave. So we'll talk about the pavement projects in a minute. Um, and those pavement projects are dictating a lot of the underground um, systems that we're trying to do because we're trying to get those fixed before we go and put pavement on top of it and then have to dig it back up. So things are having to move around and, and um, do some things ahead of where we might have otherwise done them in order to make that work. So as we talked about, uh, the 6th Street pipe, um, you can see it's made of old brick tiles in the manholes there. Um, it is 70 to 80 years old in 6th Street, so this project's gonna replace that pipe from Blaine to River Street. This is actually number two project on the inflow and infiltration list to be um, priorities to be replaced. Um, and then when we're done with this, um, paving or with this sewer project we will be paving 6th street um, next summer in order to get this done so then we would pave again next summer the northeast shehalem wastewater extension pipe the properties along northeast shehalem drive are starting to develop there's no existing public wastewater line in the area so this project would bring that um, that line up shehalem drive um, to allow for more orderly development there along the fringe. Um, there's also a water line project that we'll talk about in a little bit that we'll um, build at the same time. Lift station coatings. Again, this is um, to help with the INI &I issue. You can see in some of the pictures there's water flowing into those lift stations. Again, causing um, peak flows. So we're we will be going to um, line these pipes or these ma uh, lift stations so that that water is not intruding into those systems anymore. Hess Creek Trunk Line. This is a project that came out of the 2018 master plan, um, and it's a priority project. A couple things with this area is that it's the access to it is limited because it's within the Hess Creek. Um, canyon in a lot of locations so this would actually line the northern section of the pipe and then we would um, do some flow monitoring to determine whether or not how much um, additional capacity is necessary downstream once we keep that i and i from going into that pipe how much more capacity may we need or not need as the case may be so pavement rehabilitation um, you know, we've talked about this a lot over the last couple years. And just so you know, these maps will be available on the website uh, um, in the next day or two. Um, so these are the projects that we'll be doing this, this summer. Uh, Fifth Street, Melody Lane, Virtue Street, Foothills Drive, Second Street, Third Street, Church Street, Meridian Street, and Fifth Street from Dayton to Blaine. This list doesn't include the Crack and Slurry Seal projects. Um, which is on a separate map. Um, 
and the, but those will be happening actually soon. I believe you'll have a, a an award of that bid at your next meeting. I believe no, May twentieth. I believe in order to issue that contract. Um, and then one other thing to note, um, we just found out last week that actually our transportation utility fee is going to be featured on the FHWA Innovative Finance Support page with a project um, for the Fifth Street project that we did last summer. Um, they're actually going to have a project page that um, highlights that. As soon as I have that link up, I'll make sure everybody knows about it. So that was, that was kind of cool. Okay, the next one, ADA improvements. Um, we have a 2007 um, ADA pedestrian bike plan that was incorporated into the, into the transportation plan. There are critical routes that were identified in that plan. Um, we have constructed over 86,000 lineal feet of sidewalk and 200 new ADA ramps since 2007. Um, obviously, we have more that needs to be installed. We have $27,000 planned for next fiscal year and then in, um, an increasing amount in later years. Um, I will be back to talk to this group in July to talk about uh, sidewalks in general and what what we what kind of a program we may or may not want to to implement. Sorry, Karen, can I just bug you with one? Mm -hmm. So the critical routes that were identified and these were, I assume, these are uh, safe routes from Friends View to downtown or whatever it is, that kind of thing. Is that what yeah? They, they are, were the from um, from the north residential areas to downtown, from the schools okay. back to downtown, schools to parks. Those are a variety of things. Okay, and uh, did the eighty six thousand feet focus on those particularly? No, the eighty six thousand feet was all over. Okay. Um, so some of it were on the critical routes and some of them were new subdivisions that were installed and all those sidewalks that were installed as part of those new subdivisions also. And, and finally, $27,000, any idea how many linear feet of sidewalk that will get? Anybody? Uh, <laughs> Sorry. No, that's um, all right. No, don't, no worries. We can uh, uh, get back to us with uh, that. Yeah, unfortunately, the cost of concrete keeps going up right. and also the, the concrete um, contractor's price keeps going up. So right. um, it's a... It's summer by summer basis on that. Okay, and we don't do sidewalks ourselves. Didn't we do sidewalks at one point ourselves? We we do a limited amount of okay. sidewalks, um, but uh, you know there's a, there's a lot of pieces that go into actually building a sidewalk before besides making it ADA compliant and and those types of things. So. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor. Um, and where typically does the money for those sidewalks come from, that 27000 Where does that come out of? It comes out of the gas tax. Okay. Um, we actually, per state law, we're supposed to spend 1% of our gas tax money on uh, sidewalks or, and or bike lanes okay. along uh, public rights way. I got another one. That's all right. Yep. Um, and then you, you mentioned that increasing the amounts in the coming years, is that based on gas tax revenue from the legislation that was passed or part of it's based on gas tax revenue paste part of it's based on um, we actually applied for a safe routes to school grant last year we didn't receive it but we're hoping to apply again next year and there's a certain amount of a match required for that um, and then um, as again we talk in July with the council about whether or not we want to implement a more robust sidewalk program where we were going and doing some other sidewalks more proactively and that's a discussion that we'll have here in July when can I keep going yes, sir. okay when you mentioned doing sidewalk project proactively is that creating new sidewalks or is that rehabilitation of sidewalks that are currently in place could be either or both okay and then would this would at some point would council be asked about the policy of rehabilitation of sidewalks and how we handle that currently that will all happen July 15th. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah. Uh, July 15th, will that also include a, if we are doing, if we are asking homeowners to rehabilitate the sidewalks in front of their property, will there be discussion as to how they may pay for that? That will, we'll, we will start that discussion. Okay. My hope 
on that July 15th is to throw out some options and ideas and get direction back from the council about where they want to go to produce a more robust program if the council chooses to go there. Okay, thank you. Just one, and this is more of a statement, um, July 15th, the transportation utility fee, I, I just wanna make it abundantly clear from this chair, was meant for roads. Um, and we have a robust pro program that we have outlined out several years. So I would hate to see this group change the, the focus of that fee to include sidewalks without either considering an increase in it, which I, I think is maybe not the best approach. Um, but I just wanted to go on the record as saying that I think the street utility fee is working really well and I would hate to see us monkey with where those dollars are directed to. Okay, um, so the next project, East Crestview Drive, Highway 99 to Springbrook Road. So this is an important transportation link to the north portion of the city. Um, this section of road obviously is, is gravel and, um, and doesn't exist, so we would be installing curbs, gutters, bike lanes, sidewalks, um, and also utilities underneath that, that roadway while we're there. Um, this is a project that has five different partners. Um, we received a grant for $740,000 from the state from Business Oregon in order to help construct this road. Um, the JT Smith uh, properties will be building the piece between the Oxburg Estates uh, south to 99W and that, that intersection with Providence Drive. And then Springbrook properties will be participating in this section of the roadway also um, in, to move forward with that. And then there will be a certain amount of city funds under SDCs to help pay for that. College Street, bike lanes and sidewalks. I know this project is near and dear to some people. Um, this would in, in extend sidewalks north from Alder Crest to Foothills, um, and it would extend bike lanes on both sides of the street. We would also be doing a water line re relocation as that will be under where the sidewalk and curb will be. Um, most of the funding is through ODOT's um, STP program and that the total city cost um, is expected to be about $300,000 um, with $200,000 in this fiscal year and another hundred in next fiscal year. Um, we did come to the council with this project um, over a year ago with an, the original um, intergovernmental agreement with ODOT for that. Um, we have been working through that. There were some issues with the scope of work um, and the fees associated with the uh, design contract. So we've been working through that and we're hoping to come back to you with a new IGA, updated IGA from ODOT in, I keep saying this, but hopefully in the next couple of months it, seems to take a long time to get um, out of ODOT those, those IGAs. So um, before we move forward, we will be coming back to this group. Um, right now, the idea is that there wouldn't be any more money coming out of our pocket. We would just be moving money from right of way up to preliminary engineering instead. So the monies stay the same, it's just where it gets spent. So um, that, at least right now, that is the plan. Mr. Mayor. Sorry, I'll, I'll be quiet, I promise. Oh, uh, this is um, the last I heard we weren't gonna make to Foothills. Um, in your professional opinion, how realistic is it that we make Foothills with the current negotiations going on with ODOT and? I, I'm, I, I'm hesitant to say anything yet. Um, okay. the, the idea, the concern is um, with right of way. If we can um, do the, work without having to acquire additional right-of-way, um, then we can make it happen. It's it, The question is whether or not we we will have to acquire right-of-way, and we won't know that until we get out there and do any Design. survey work to determine where th things currently exist. So we, we do have a plan that if, if we have to scale it back, we would scale it back to Henry and then do some kind of a mid-block crossing there to get people over to, to the west side of the street. I mean the east side street, sorry. North Elliott Road. Uh, this is the main entrance into the high school. 
Um, there are obviously substandard bike and pedestrian facilities on this roadway. Um, there's also no public drainage system. So um, we're moving forward with a project to construct sidewalks, bike lanes, and drainage um, on this roadway. There will be a very extensive public involvement process that will occur um, and uh, moving forward. West Illinois Fire Flow Project. This is um, on the west side of town, and this is an area that showed that the fire flow uh, did not meet current standards, so we will be installing an eight inch line as part of the Shehalem Water and Wastewater Project in order to um, bring that fire flow into today's standards. <coughs> Next slide. Oh, there it went. Sorry, it, it's just taking a while. Uh, so George Fox fire flow, this is another one that um, is, is in the same situation. The, um, and so we will be putting in eight inch lines um, in these locations. In fact, you will have a contract award um, in front of you next at your next meeting in order to award the construction contract for that. Northeast Shehalem water extension. So this again, goes along with the wastewater. Now this project will actually not extend all the way up to Columbia Drive. Um, it will actually extend over um, and crossing the creek and then end at uh, the intersection of Highway 240 and Shehalem Drive. Uh, decommissioning wells number one and two. These wells are at the end of the life. We're not currently using them, and we need to properly decommission them. And uh, but we put that on hold in, as we work through our water rights issue. Um, you had a presentation a couple weeks ago about the water master, water management and conservation plan, along with the water rights. And so once we've gotten through that water right rights process, we will um, finish up the decommissioning of these wells. We talked about this earlier, the College Street water line relocation. Again, we need to um, lower the water line uh, because it's actually in the way of constructing the curb and, and sidewalk. <coughs> Next slide, please. College Street valves. Um, again, this will happen with the same project. Um, one of the things in 2014, um, we found we didn't have enough valves along College Street when the pipe broke. Uh, we couldn't sh shut it off quick enough. So this will install some additional valves through here so that we can um, shut the water off if there was a need to do that in the future. Thank you. Bell West Pump Station. So this pump station is needed to supply adequate water uh, fire flow and service pressure to the zone two expansion area. This is the areas north of Foothills, uh, between Foothills and, and Bell Road, that area up there. Um, once the Bell Road Reservoir is constructed, which is way in the future, this um, pump station would be used to, to serve that, um, that reservoir. So this project uh, would also extend water lines from North Terrace Drive um, to the intersection of North College and North Valley and then east down Bell Road. Um, there's actually a twin project on the um, east side of town, uh, Bell Road, uh, Bell East Pump Station, that will do the same thing on that side of town and eventually they will connect in the middle. Oops. Uh, Victoria Square Fire Flow. Um, this is in the same um, concerns that the Illinois Street and George Fox are. It's, it's an area of town that um, needs additional uh, fire flow, so we will be um, installing an 8-inch pipe in that location in order to address the deficiency. Fixed base radio read. There are currently six... 7,700 meters or so in the city. Um, the existing meter uh, reading system requires somebody drive through the entire city to read these, the meters. This system would allow for those meters to be read from the utility billing office um, in real time. Um, so ratepayers would be able to gain access to the information. Uh, we would have access 
to real-time data. If there was a leak or something like that, that could be caught very quickly um, in order to um, save time and, and money. Routine water line replacement. So there are um, 600,000 lineal feet of pipe today. Um, as the existing pipes age, you have to replace those. And uh, so this is money set aside to replace pipes on a routine basis um, rather than on emergency repair. So we'll go look at the, um, the oldest pipes in the city, um, also pipes underneath roads that we're gonna pave in the near future and get those replaced um, so that uh, hopefully we don't have water line breaks. Water rights review and re reconfiguration. This is looking at our existing water rights um, and reconfiguring as we noted earlier. So we have water rights in wells number one and two which are not being used. So we wanna move those water rights over to some of our other existing wells. So that's what this project is. Redundant supply. Um, this project's looking for another supply option on this side of the Willamette River, uh, mostly for emergency purposes. Per the master plan, it would provide 2 million gallons per day, which is our wintertime average usage. Um, we will again be at front of the council in June to talk about redundant supply. Um, there's redundant can mean anywhere from a short term supply for just a wintertime um, thing, or it could be a full time, um, you know, a completely redundant system to replace our entire thing, and that's a decision that the council needs to make. So we'll come and talk about different options, criteria, and, and um, values for that. But uh, this project was originally intended to find another 2 million gallons per day in the case that we lost the water lines crossing the river or those types of things on this side of the river. Oops. Seismic resiliency study. So this is evaluating the seismic hazards at the existing water treatment plant, and also evaluating the water system for resiliency in the case of a seismic event. In other words, do, do we wanna put some flexible couplings in certain locations so that the main transmission mains are still functional, even if some of the smaller pipes may or may not be. So this is the study to come up with a list of projects that we may um, implement in order to become more seismic, re seismically resilient. Clarifier study. This study was recommended in the 2018 master plan. Um, our clar current clarifiers are working well and they're able to handle the peak flows that we see a few times a year. Uh, this project would work with DEQ to grant us the approval to increase the allowable loading on the clarifiers and then delay the need for additional um, clarifiers to be constructed. Utility master plans. Um, I know this group has seen uh, these master plans over the last several years. Um, as the riverfront master plan is adopted, um, the recommendations from that plan will need to be incorporated into the existing plans. And uh, so we will be looking at the water, stormwater, wastewater, and transportation plans. The wastewater plan will also look at um, this, uh, the Springbrook Basin and the definition of surcharge that this council um, directed this staff to do um, at this new update. So that will occur as part of that, um, as part of that look. Um, also, I wanted to note on page 57 of the actual CIP document, um, I noted in there that the plan needs to be updated every five years, that is inaccurate. Um, and I will update that before it gets uploaded to the website for the, the final document. Um, there was some miscommunication between the governor's seismic resiliency page and, and what the actual ORSs and OAR say. So we will update that. And, um, and uh, so it just says that we need to incorporate any seismic plans into those master plans. So we will make that happen. Oops. Oxidation ditch ro road replacements. So this is a key part of the mixing and aeration of the wastewater process. There are eight um, rotor aerators. Um, they have started failing because they are old. And so we are just replacing them one at a time. 
and uh, we will plan to have the next all of them replaced in the next year Water treatment plant land purchase. Um, there may be, need, be a need to expand the wastewater treatment plant in the future. So we've looked at um, the need for two acres adjacent to the existing plant. Uh, this project would allow for environmental studies, surveying appraisals, and then possibly the property purchase, assuming that we have a willing seller um, and, the, and the city decides to move forward with that. I see you note environmental studies here for the expansion on West Rock's property. If we could get that to happen, that would be uh, that would be awesome. It would also be good <laughs> if we didn't have to pay for it. That's just for the record for whoever's listening, West Rock in Atlanta, Georgia. We will keep that in mind. Next. Next. So the maintenance yard. Um, this there's a need to have a fully functional facility um, to adequately respond to emergencies. Um, we've been doing incremental projects out at the site uh, over the last several years and it will continue for the next several years. Um, the installation of fuel tanks will be happening in the next six months or so. And the planned improvements for next fiscal year are replacement fencing, covered parking for the large vehicles that are out there, um, and some additional paving. Operations remodel. So the existing treatment plant um, administration building was constructed in 1987, and there's a lot of un underutilized space. Um, this project would do a um, laboratory remodel, which is con uh, pretty much out of date, and would also do some additional network wiring. The conference uh, room in the front actually has one ethernet cable, and if that was our backup emergency operations center, that could become a problem, so that this project would install additional cabling and networks. Roofing. Um, again, roofing has been deferred out of the treatment plant, so this would replace um, the, the roof um, on that operations building to coincide with that remodel. Oxidation ditch. Um, these are ditches are essential part of our treatment facility, and there's structural repairs are needed. We um, completed one of the basin or one of the ditches two years ago, so this is the second ditch, and we can only turn them offline in the summertime. So that that's when this one will go down again to fix that. Sawdust bays. So our current um, the way we dispose of our solids at our wastewater treatment plant is we actually um, make compost um, and we make it with sawdust and those solids and so the cure bay is set up um, to dry out all of that sawdust and so we need um, additional bays to protect um, that sawdust from the weather and allow them um, to turn the sawdust supply to reduce the risk of fires so um, this facility will just allow us to create that compost um, quicker and easier. And then the compost sale pile cover. So again, the compost um, gets put in a big pile out there, and so this would cover that pile so that it doesn't get wet through the winter months. Um, so that's what this project is all about. And that's all I have. So, if there are any questions? Questions? Anyone? Lisby. Yeah. Um, sorry, I didn't uh, ask you this question uh, prior to this. It just came to my mind. But with the um, possibility of expanding the wastewater treatment plant, my understanding is that it currently uh, holds twice of what we need it to. When would we think that we would need to expand? Like, what's the prediction that we would actually need more space? Do we know of kind of a timeline? Um, assuming, so the next pieces that would need to actually be um, upgraded on the uh, wastewater uh, treatment facility would be a clarifier, if we can't get the clarifier study to pass, mm -hmm. um, to get through DEQ, and then another oxidation ditch would be necessary. Um, the last time, it's probably anywhere from five to ten years out, at least. 
Um, we'll obviously relook at it at that stage in the game to see. Um, there, we're also doing another study in another couple years, and it's a hydraulic study, which is again another choke point at the at the plant. And once we do that study, we'll know a little bit more about if there are other improvements um, to break open those those choke points to allow the the uh, system to flow better. Thank you. Um, I guess I, I just have one, Karin, is um, in here on some of these we've got fiscal year costs and others we've got total project costs. Um, so when it comes time to the budget, will we see all the fiscal year costs on CIP and yeah. then the total project cost? You will not see the total project cost in the budget, um, but you will see the fiscal year costs in the budget. Okay. Okay, as long as they'll be broken out and, and it'll be easily identifiable how much of each is a capital improvement project when it comes time to the yeah, budget? Yeah, actually the capital projects are in their own fund. Their okay. fund four is the wastewater, water, and stormwater projects and fund 18 is the is the transportation projects. Okay. So they're, they're very distinct in that. Um, the other place to look for the full budget costs, project costs for the most part, is in the full capital program and that should have them in there okay. awesome all right anyone else any other questions seeing none thank you Karin thanks very much thank you. <clears throat> all right if if we might I think we'll move things around a little bit uh, the city managers report in the consent calendar will move to the end of the meeting um, and that way we are here for any public comments item six on our agenda at this moment I do not have any, um, and unless anyone feels compelled to say something, we will move along out of public comments. And uh, next item on our agenda, then item 8A, resolution recommending that Yamhill County approve a proposed winery and tasting room at 27200 Northeast Bell Road, tax lot 3208-1700. Doug, please. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, yes, sir. Yes, sir. This, this is a public hearing, so we need to follow. Oh, the it is a public hearing. Quasi judicial. Qu quasi judicial land use public hearing procedure. I assume that is the one. Yeah, do you have that? or? Do I you? do. Okay. All right. Um, and let's see. All right. The purpose of this public hearing um, is a resolution recommending that Yamhill County approve a proposed winery and tasting room at 27200 Northeast Bell Road, Yamhill County tax lot 3208-1700. Um, and it's resolution 2019-3552. All right, do you have legal announcements, Truman? I do indeed. If I can just catch up here. Certain announcements are required before the commencement of a quasi-judicial land use hearing. This hearing deals with the land use decision uh, of a recommendation to Yamhill County regarding a proposed conditional use and design review. The announcement required by Oregon Revised Statutes ORS 197.763 is as follows. The applicable substantive criteria for the decision are listed on Exhibit C to the resolution. Testimony, arguments, and evidence must be directed toward the criteria described above or other criteria in the plan or land use regulation that you believe applies to this decision. Failure to raise an issue accompanied by statements or evidence sufficient to afford the decision maker and the parties an opportunity to respond to the issue precludes appeal to the Land Use Board of Appeals based on that issue. 
The applicant who has the burden of proof may have at least seven days after the record is closed to submit final written argument. At the close of the testimony portion of the hearing, the applicant will have to decide if the applicant wishes to further submit written argument. ORS 197.763 definitions. Argument means assertions and analysis regarding the satisfaction or violation of legal standards or policy believed relevant by the proponent to a decision. Argument does not include facts. Evidence means facts, documents, data, or other information offered to demonstrate compliance or non-compliance with the standards believed by the proponent to be relevant to the decision. If the applicant wishes to make a submittal, no further deliberation shall place, take place tonight. If the applicant waives that right, the council may proceed with deliberation. And that's the announcement. And with that, we are ready for the staff report. Thank you, Mayor. Doug Rux, Community Development Director. So as you indicated, this is an application to review for a winery uh, on Bell Road at 27200 Northeast Bell Road. So we have an urban growth management area agreement with Yamhill County. So this particular property is located in an urban reserve area. Per that agreement, um, the applicant has to provide material to the city of Newburgh, which we bring forward to the council. The council then makes a recommendation we pass back to Yamhill County. So we received the application on March 18th. Uh, the city has an obligation to review that and get a recommendation back to the county within 60 days. I think it's important is that the county is the final decision maker on this, so the conditional use and design review. So the site is 8.7 acres, got a vineyard home, and it's got a pole barn. So the proposal is to turn the pole barn into a production and wine tasting facility. Uh, there's about a 40 by 20 shed that would be located down on the south end of the property, and that would be uh, for equipment in the management of the vineyard itself. So as the city attorney mentioned, the findings and the applicable criteria for this are located in Exhibit C. So the primary issue for the city is that this urban reserve area could someday be brought into the urban growth boundary and then could be annexed for urbanization in the future. Um, when we've looked at these before, sometimes we have this very graphic, you know, how you might lay out roads on um, these, this particular one and one similar to it, when we're only taking an existing building and modifying that building and using it for different purposes, we don't go down that level of detail and have the applicant spend a lot of time and money to try to lay out how you might lay it out for a subdivision in the future. So, but when we looked at it, we said, oh, but the position of the, uh, the pole barn and the house, uh, that 8.7 acres could definitely be urbanized in the future. You know, we do not have an overall plan laid out about where all the roads would go in that urban reserve area. Uh, but operating as a vineyard, most of the property would be vacant. It just becomes a position of economics in the future. Um, as noted in your report, uh, this would be a kind of a, a limited operation for hours and it would be by appointment only and as noted in your report those hours would be uh, between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Um, there are some additional graphics that are in your packet there was a PowerPoint did want to PowerPoint you to death tonight you saw a lot in the CIP but it's got a little bit of additional background material but all that is also covered in exhibit C that's all I have thank you all right, we are now at time for public testimony. I do have uh, one request to testify from a proponent, Mackenzie Hines. If you could uh, up the button on your right, please state your name. And there we go, and I think you've got five minutes. Hey there, I am Mackenzie Hines, and I am actually the applicant for the resolution. Um, I more or less just wanted to kind of put a face to the project. And uh, yeah, just thank the city council and especially Doug for putting this plan together uh, to propose. And yeah, I just more or less wanted to give you guys an opportunity to ask hopefully any questions um, about the project itself. So questions, Patrick? You know, I'm always good for a question or two. <laughs> um, so how much, um, just ballpark, I'm not looking for a traffic study, but how much traffic do you expect to generate with this project? Yeah, so this, uh, this um, we're, we plan on maxing out the winery uh, to about 
1,200 cases. So this is very much going to be boutique in nature. Uh, to put that in perspective, that's about 40 barrels of wine a year. Um, many of the wineries would outsize us around the, the following area. So uh, having said that, um, we have met with the county several times. And right now, our plan uh, for really Saturday and Sunday being kind of high traffic uh, for designated time, we're thinking really at the most uh, 30, 35 people uh, Saturdays and Sundays. Yeah. And that's, again, by appointment only. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you asked about the question of uh, traffic. I, uh, just for full disclosure, I lived on Bell Road for 16 years, I believe, just not far from this. Um, and it's a very highly traveled road at excessive speed, unfortunately, many times. But anyway, so I'm glad you have been in touch with them regarding traffic, particularly. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Any, other, any other questions? Hearing none. OK. OK. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, guys. All right, uh, letters or comments received, Sue? Mr. Mayor, we have not received any letters or comments for this item. Okay, thank you. All right, public testimony is now closed on this hearing, and legal can announcements from the uh, city attorney, please. If the decision is not made tonight and continue to another date, the record could be reopened at that later date by motion of the council. Therefore, do not assume no further evidence will be taken. If the decision is made tonight, the council has the authority to reconsider the decision following proper procedure. This motion to reconsider is usually required to be made at the next meeting of the council. The fact that the council could reconsider their decision does not affect the length of time for appeal of that decision. And then uh, I'll just ask the applicant, do you wish to submit any further written um, argument so the applicant indicates they have uh, they, they do not exercise the right to uh, submit further written argument so the council can uh, make a decision tonight. All right, final comments. Thank you, Mayor Doug Rux again. So staff is recommending the council adopt resolution 2019-3552. Okay, thank you. All right, discussion, Patrick. Um, actually, I had a question of staff. Is it too late to do that? Okay. Um, so I this particular project doesn't concern me as much as others in the past have i wanted to know the appropriateness of us in this recommendation adding a sentence or two regarding the intersection of north valley bell road and 219 uh, letting the county know that continued development in this area there needs to be some sort of transportation plan for that intersection and how we're all going to pay for improvements at that intersection where we have a school we have a church and now we have development going on in that sector of Newburgh and out in the county so I just wanted to know if a general statement was appropriate in there saying that we we approve this but in the future we need to we need to start having discussions about how we handle the the traffic impact of that area and I'd like to follow on on that as well because the, the intersection of Aspen Way and Bell Road is also very bad as well so it um counselor I, I believe that you could add a new uh, three in the uh, in the resolve section that says something to the effect that the city of Newburgh recommends that Yamhill County monitor transportation related to improvements along Bell Road from um, College Street to Springbrook Road it's almost like you do this for a living. <laughs> All right. Any other questions of staff? No, nope, seeing none. Let's uh, into deliberation. Anyone? Further discussion, Patrick. And just one more comment regarding that subject. I would I would also suggest that in the future, when we receive the, these types of requests from the county, in this sector. Um, we include that language in each one of these just to be consistent from going forward and um, I I'm fully in support of this I don't think the the traffic impact is is going to be huge it's going to be on a Saturday and Sunday when we're not seeing peak travel times along Bell Road um, I think it, it assists our um, our economic development plan with tourism and I also think that um, you know the fact that the applicant uh, even though they're in the county, decided to come out and, and give a give a presentation, I think says volumes about the type of neighbor they want to be. So I'll be in support. All right. Any other comments? 
Seeing none, how's about a motion? Mm -hmm. Yes, Mike. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, make a motion that we approve resolution number 2019-3552 with the amended language. Second. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. The resolution passes. Um, resolution 2019-3552 passes. Okay. All right. Next on our agenda, I believe, is new business. Item 9A, um, resolution 2019-3554. And this involves murals in residential zones. Is this you again, Doug? Yes, Mayor. All right. So Doug Rocks, Community Development Director. Um, so you remember about a year ago, we had a new mural that was uh, painted onto the east wall of Steve's Auto. And so this year, uh, there was an uh, investigation and evaluation of where another mural may be able to go within Newburgh. So the location that it was identified was the library annex building. So that's just to the west of the library. Um, so as staff uh, began having conversations about putting a mural on the north wall of that building, so facing the cultural center, uh, we dug into the code about what you can and cannot do for murals. And murals uh, are very limited in an R2 zone, so the library annex building is in an R2. And so places of assembly, uh, churches, uh, can have a mural on their buildings in residential in R2. And fraternal organizations can have murals on their buildings in R2. Um, but the library annex building is neither in a place of assembly or a fraternal organization facility. So had conversations with the library director and so they've been approached by GFU and the Rotary this project but it's also gone to the cultural district board who supported it. So Leah and I sat down and talked about how we might be able to approach this. And so Leah wrote me a letter and made a request, could we change the development code? So think of this as kind of a partnership between the library and planning uh, to address the issue of art within the downtown plan area. Um, so this proposal would be to, to initiate a development code amendment to allow government structures, and I'll use that term loosely today until we get into it further, um, to allow government structures within residential R1, R2, R3 to be allowed to have a mural. Of course, a mural takes a separate process uh, to be re reviewed, so they have to put together a proposal. It has to be submitted to the city. The city reviews it. We then take it to the cultural center, who is the review committee, the artists, and they review it and provide us feedback. And then it comes back to the city, then we review it and issue a final decision to be able to do a mural. Now murals have to be in place for a minimum of three years, so you can't paint it on one year, paint over it the next year. And we also have some other limitations, you can't cover up windows, and so we've talked with, the, with GFU about how they might be able to do a mural but still retain the windows that are on that north elevation. Uh, it's always important that I remind council, you're not being asked to make a decision on a proposal, only to initiate the process, where we would then go back and develop a proposal, bring it forward to the Planning Commission, the Planning Commission would review it, develop a resolution, which is a recommendation to the council, and it comes back to the council for a public hearing. Thank you. Any questions of staff? Hearing none, do I... No further discussion. Do I have a motion? Denise. Yes. Uh, Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt resolution 2019-3554, initiating an amendment to the Newburgh Municipal Code, Title 15, Development Code for regulation related to murals in residential zones. The second? Where'd I get it? All right. Oh, who said it? No, you didn't? Mike got it. Sorry. Jeez. Sorry. <laughs> got to score this correctly, Mike. All right. Anyone else? Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, resolution 2019-3554 passes. All right. Now, um, and actually, 
we could have a big flag of Newburgh as a mural. Yeah. Just saying, if anybody wanted to put that up. All right. All right. Let's, uh, we are now moving back. Let's go to the consent calendar first. This is item seven. Um, and I think we've pulled item E out of consent. Uh, but why don't we start with the consent calendar A through D first? Anyone? Mike. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we approve uh, A through D on the consent calendar. Okay, do we second. have a se second? Patrick on a second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, consent calendar A through D passes. On to consent calendar item uh, 7E. Um, counselors had questions regarding this one? Um, feel free. Anyone? Uh, who is answering them? Uh, the, uh, for the solar. Right. Good evening, uh, Council Jay Harris, your Public Works Director. Um, I am here tonight to give you a brief staff report on Resolution 2019-3555, uh, and it's a resolution authorizing the Public Works Director to apply for a PGE uh, Development Fund grant and an Oregon Department of Energy uh, grant. Um, and uh, for the, it will total approximately uh, $350,000 in uh, grants and rebates. And uh, we went through, staff went through a little alternatives analysis at the wastewater plant. Um, the goal of the project is to try to reduce uh, the electrical costs at the plant. Um, right now, the costs are about $350,000 a year. Um, we looked at a very large project. Um, we have some excess ground next to the animal shelter. And um, unfortunately, that large project, um, you couldn't get big enough grants to offset the, the $3.2 million cost. It had like an 18, 17 to 18 uh, year payback period on the $3.2 million, $2 million project. Um, talked to Joe, and we thought it would be a good idea to go with a smaller project. Um, a couple acres, two and a half acres worth of panels there. But it's all contingent on obtaining these grants. Um, the cost of the project is about 824000 and um, hopefully we can get the $350,000 in grants and rebates. And with that, we'd be talking to you guys about moving forward with the project. Um, we would need to um, reallocate projects in the capital improvement plan that you just saw tonight that Karin just showed you. We would be talking to you guys about what are we going to move, what are we going to cut, because these grants come in, we have to use them like within a year. They're really quick ones. And um, so we thought we'd bring this up to you, though, because these grant cycles only come up every year. And um, we can make these time frames right now for this one, but if we, we don't move forward with this, these applications, uh, we're off another year uh, with this project. Um, that's the end of my staff report. Right. Um, questions for Jay? Jay, I guess, I guess just what I, what I didn't, wasn't sure of when I, when I read the report was whether or not it was contingent, as you said, upon the grants coming through. And that, that I, I couldn't be clear. So that's that's basically why I wanted to pull it out of consent. Yeah, um, that's uh, the final part of the actual resolution. Mm -hmm. um, that it is number two in the resolves. Okay. Um, as long as it, yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Any other questions on this? I, yep. I have a question. Stephanie. I, I mostly just have a question about the location of the solar panels. Um, I know we own that property um but it looks like you know in in looking at this we're talking about um 25 to 40 years are we good with that piece of property being sort of taken out of commission for other things yeah for that, that amount of time that's a great question um if it's pushed up towards the animal shelter area um we're probably 50 years out we have a master plan that they did was like a 50-year plan i think they did it about 10 years ago bunch more clarifiers, oxidation ditches and all that. 
And um, there's actually room left over right there. At one time, the maintenance yard was actually supposed to move next door to the animal shelter. There was about four acres left over, you know, past 50 years. So um, we're using that opportunity, obviously, to put uh, these panels in there. And uh, they have a 40-year lifespan on them. Um, the warranty is about 25 year uh, from the manufacturer. Um, and one thing I wanted to note also is uh, panels are changing quickly, just like batteries are and cars are and cell phones and everything that um, the density and the energy they can get per square foot, um, they say in the next 10 years could, could potentially double. So this little smaller project is good because we can always add on a little bit more to it later also of maybe some better panels if that actually is true and they develop them, right? So uh, good concern, but we, per a plan we did 10 years ago, um, we shouldn't have a problem with uh, expansion of the wastewater plant. I have a follow-up question sure. to that. Um, any idea or sense if the uh, animal shelter thinks of that as a good neighbor? Uh, if they're a good Since neighbor to the solar panel right, site? Right, if, if the solar panels will be an okay neighbor for the animal shelter. Well, I know they're quiet, right, which is good. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but, um, I mean, solar pan panels can have a little bit of glare to them, right? And there's some other things. They're black, that sort of thing. And so um, we, if if we move forward with this grant and we get them, we have to go through a design review through Doug's processes. Um, and I'm assuming, Doug, is this a, a planning commission hearing or is this a, uh, just a type two, would you know? It's a two? Okay. So uh, anyways, uh, we would have to go through a, a process and involving, you know, mailing the adjacent owners and all that. So that will be something we need to talk about during that process. Um, you know, just well, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just wondering if you are thinking about having a battery as a part of this in order to use it for emergency preparedness as well, or are you not going to do a battery with it? I actually talked to PGE about that. They have a big battery down in Salem. It's one of their trial projects, and uh, it's going okay. But um, PGE said that there's actually quite a bit of excess energy in our grid with the mill gone now that um, they have significant resources in Newburgh. And so at this point, they weren't they didn't think this was a good candidate for a battery um, we do have generators at the wastewater plant mm -hmm. and the water plant that can put energy back into the system they're diesel oh, generators so go short them. short term they'll obviously run out of diesel down yeah. the road pretty quick but so we do have it's small energy sources in this community and the solar would be another one right that it would be available generating electricity and putting it back into the grid if we were cut off you know from the rest of the system and we could maybe add a battery later if that was necessary yeah yeah, yeah. and battery technology is changing yeah. immensely also yeah thank you and, and just to follow up on stephanie's question if this if we decided that there was a better use for this piece of property could this be moved at some later date yeah the panels can be relocated okay. um, they're not firm in the ground it's minor concrete work that sort of thing okay. to attach them so you wouldn't be out significant costs to move them okay all right Great, thank you. Any other questions for Jay? No, all right. All right, um, any other discussion? How's about a motion? I'll make a motion. There you go. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we approve resolution 2019-3555. Second. And Denise on the second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Uh, opposed, same sign. Hearing none? Resolution passes. Thank you, Jay. City uh, manager's report. C city manager's, yes. City manager's report it is. So, Mayor and Council, Joe Hand, your city manager. I'll do it quick. Um, you have a copy of this uh, report that I'll read just several items off of it or share. Um, so does the press and our television. Um, this last weekend, big Camellia Festival. Um, we are the Camellia City. Um, the council 
has given some funding through the lodging tax for advertising the festival. The festival was bigger than it was last year, attracted a lot of people from um, out of the state, and they'll do a, a final report that gets to it. This year, uh, in addition to having more entertainment, it also incorporated the Japanese um, American community here, and a big part was the uh, Consul General of their office and one of our newest businesses, St. Corsair. Um, it was preceded by Thursday where the mayor um, attended along with the school superintendent and the, the Japanese Consul General at the high school to an internationally known um, taiko drumming uh, performance for the kids at the high school and some of the middle school. So it was a big deal and a big success in the weather. Uh, um, cooperated with it. Um, we're continuing to talk with Representative Bonamici's staff regarding a request to the, instead of HUD, to the Federal Office of Management Budget to see if we can gain recognition as it's called a recipient. It's a principal city for a recipient of HUD funds. And those kinds of funds, if we became an entitlement, would allow us to do some of the things like with the, um, through grants to homeless programs to community service to all different kinds of wraparound. Um, there are three cities in our state that are designated as principal cities, so we're trying to rely upon that. It's, it's a long shot, but we're trying. <clears throat> we also met today with um, uh, just a meet and greet, and, and Councilor Yarnell Holman, um, maybe during her part, would um, fill the council and the rest about the process of getting down to the final one, two, or three of um, directors for the visit in Newburgh. So we had a chance to um, talk to um, uh, at least one of the candidates and then remind them, and Doug's working with the attorney for visit Newburgh on uh, <clears throat> the finalization of the agreement, which includes within that a business plan that will come back um, to the council before we get into all the release of all of the funds from lodging tax. Um, also uh, accompanied the mayor to a what's called an annual invite luncheon at Friends View. So they had about a hundred of the guests that will be future um, Newburgh residents at Friends View, and um, we talked to them about um, kind of the um, a little snapshot of what Newburgh is and the ten best things to do in Newburgh, and it uh, it uh, went over very well. Um, Jay Harris and Lindsay Clemmer from Public Works also have been working with um, Yamhill County Health Department and we as a city along with several other cities, uh, well I don't know if several other, but a couple other cities in Yamhill County and across the state on a medical exercise shortly which involves um, uh, taking medical pods that with inoculations in them and this is really for pandemic uh, pandemic flu and if you remember several years back at Linfield College they had a mask inoculation um, for meningitis so we're that's just one more of the things that we get prepared for this pod that would be delivered here um, would be administered to our employees and their families so that the, the people at the city, the first responders and other ones um, would be capable of helping the community go through the last. Um, one that uh, some interest on gravel roads, um, which is always of interest to people. Uh, we met with um, a property owner at Maine and Franklin in between Franklin and Sheridan looking at discussing the gravel road there. Just an interesting thing we found out that it's not really a city street. It's in the right of way for the old depot that was there. So we're exploring some things, um, maybe working with the railroad and with this property owner to make some repairs there, um, but also a potential of just abandoning that street and having one less area of gravel that uh, we're responsible for. We'll keep you up to speed, but if you see some stuff working on gravel roads, it's because of some of the special circumstances there. Um, also, again, Councilor Yarnell Holman might um, fill in the rest of the council about a countywide housing <clears throat> um, program that Commissioner Kula is doing, and also Providence has a particular initiative with that um, revolving homes. Finally, we just two other items. Um, uh, Leah Griffith, even though she's getting ready to retire, 
has been working with staff, Public Works primarily, for us to plan for the future of the tree lighting. Um, something we don't think about, we have several thousand people show up, but it doesn't just happen, and we have the challenges of finding a tree big enough, getting someone to light it, getting it all set up, getting all the insurance and all that, sound equipment and entertainment. So we're working on a plan to get us uh, done in the uh, future. And the final one is um, Jay Harris and I, we met um, with, a with a property owner on one um, uh, possible site for a downtown transit area. We're kind of going back and forth and we're looking to um, encourage the county so a transit meeting that's coming up we we'll, hopefully we'll be able to talk about it there getting the county to participate county transit to participate in making some enhancements to the street where the transit would go to encourage the people around the block to think this is a good thing all right any questions of Joe all right hearing none thank you all right uh, next item 10 council business and council committee reports Anybody, what have you all been up to? At least your name was mentioned at least twice. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Um, so for Visit Newburgh, um, we are down. Hello, Chief Casey. Uh, <laughs> we are down to a couple of different candidates, all very qualified and exciting to sit down and interview with them. Um, so, yeah, there's been... A process with the visit Newburgh um, group that formed out of the TLT committee and everyone's been pretty engaged in the process that's great so hopefully in the next couple of weeks there'll be a decision on an executive director to move forward mm -hmm. to create an, an initial budget um, and then let's see um, and the, per the person will be housed out also out of the downtown coalition building um, then let's see what else. Um, I went to the transit committee. Interesting. Not too much to report out from that. <laughs> um, and then I went to, um, so yeah, the housing, the housing group that's been meeting um, led by Commissioner Kula um, is inner city. It's not the right word, inter city, you know what I'm saying? Not inner city, okay. Um, group of people meeting to talk about housing solutions um providence has um some skin in the game with um, our mission of serving the poor and vulnerable so my providence hat um we've been working towards um potential of tiny homes on providence property um so hopefully i can say that just said it so <laughs> Um, but it would be for housing of um, medically fragile um, and specifically addiction, um, psychosocial determinants of health, and um, our medically fragile geriatric population in our county. So, um, yeah, so hopefully that will happen. But it's a large group of people with um, a lot of different solutions being brought to the table. Um, that hopefully will inspire some interfaith community partners. Um, there's car camping with um, Champion Team. They're doing a lot of great work in McMinnville. Um, so we've actually started car camping at Providence um, and it's been going amazingly. We've been seeing a lot of um, actually better connection to services. So it's patients that are our patients at Providence that are homeless that we're allowing to car camp through a process. So. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Denise. Patrick, Mike, and I met. Uh, we are on the NERPS committee. That is the Newburgh Employee Retirement Plan. Yes, um, that covers public works, but not anybody new coming into public works. So it's an older plan. Um, as you might have guessed, we didn't do well last year. But fortunately, our plan is kind of smoothed out, so we don't take big hits all at once. Um, it's looking better for the future. The last quarter that wasn't in the report that we had, um, it looked better. But unless you guys have anything wonderful to add, this committee did make the good choice of moving a few years ago to, uh, to property 
mm. uh, commercial property. And we went against the advice of our people and we actually won. So, but don't ask us to do other investments because that's all we know about. All right, anyone else? Patrick, did you have an update on the bypass, or do I see anything? Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, I have an update I on the should bypass. Have, I should not have asked. Yeah, okay, no, you don't have an hour. I'll, I'll keep it short and sweet. Um, so, as many of you know, I'm going to take my glasses off. That's how serious this is. Um, the uh, Parkway Committee for Yamhill County uh, spent a day at the Capitol. Yay! Um, and we took a, about a dozen people, uh, business leaders and uh, political folks from uh, Yamhill County, McMinnville, and the surrounding areas. Um, the, the highlight of the day was meeting with the governor about the uh, bypass and, and what we're asking for. And tonight I'm gonna be requesting that we direct staff to update and cre or create a, a letter of support for finishing the bypass um, that is kind of the uh, push that the Parkway Committee is going for now is just to finish the whole thing. Um, and that way we're not doing a piecemeal, um, especially with the, um, the rumblings of a transportation plan, potentially funding package going through Congress. Um, uh, DeFazio is on that uh, committee. I think he chairs the committee. So, um, and I know uh, Mayor Rogers went back and, and talked to all those folks. So thank you for that. Um, Overall, I'd say the meetings that we had, and we had several, we, we started at about 12.30 and we went until about 7 p.m. Um, and we met with uh, a number of different legislatures, uh, legislators. Uh, we met with the state treasurer, Tobias Reed. Um, pretty much everyone was, was really positive. Um, the big question is, where does the money come from? Uh, from a state side, we, we currently, um, in the, the governor's budget, which may change, um, there's $32.4 million in our proposed budget for continued uh, work on the bypass. Um, we need about 150 from the state and about the same from the federal government. So uh, kind of a big, big lift, but we're hoping that um, folks like, well, I will say, and I normally don't like doing this, but um, I do really have to you know, take my hat off and, and tip my hat to Representative Bill Post. Um, just last week, he gave a very impassioned speech on the House floor about um, the number of accidents out on McKay Road that they're directly linking to people figuring out that we have a partial bypass and it's really cool to go down McKay Road and uh, speed and not pay attention and then with uh, tragic consequences out there. And um, actually the day that we did the, uh, the meeting at the Capitol coming back, there was another accident out there. So. Um, but Rep po Representative Post uh, gave some very, very good advice to us, and it's all outlined in, in the report I put in the packet, um, that you know he is firmly on board, and he was somebody that was kind of hesitant to support um, earlier this year, and, and now he is firmly in the, we need to make this happen as soon as possible to save lives out on McKay Road. So um, you know, thank you to him. Um, and then uh, we all attended the joint uh, Committee on Transportation and had a hearing on the bypass and uh, we had a number of uh, you know Scott Parrish from uh, ADEC uh, testified and uh, re represented us very very well and uh, Susan Sokoblosser also testified and uh, Sam Brentano from Marion County testified. So this is a, a multi-county um, even we have Central Coast uh, counties even coming out and saying this needs to happen so um, and just one last piece, um, we're trying not to call it the Newburgh Dundee Bypass anymore. We want to call it the, I, I personally think it should be called the Metro to Coast Bypass, but um, right now we're calling it the Highway 18 Bypass. So oh. just to let you know. That's boring. I know, Metro to Coast is better, Metro to Coast, but eh, marketing guy, you know? So that's, you know. Um, and that's about it, so. Um, do I need to make a motion? Yeah, I, I think I will make a motion to um, go ahead and direct staff to uh, craft a letter of support for finishing the complete bypass um, at their leisure. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, if we could do that, that would be awesome. All right, anybody else? Great job. Well, well, thank you.
thank you. It was nice for, of you to be there. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Mayor Prayer Breakfast. Yeah, so it was held two weekends ago, I believe, I think. Um, and it was great. It was sold out. The event was sold out. I think that's the first time in quite a while that they've, that they've gotten it sold out. We had the mayor from McMinnville, um, Scott Hill, and Dundee. Yeah, yeah, it was great. And uh, actually, the thought, the talk afterwards was maybe we expand it, invite all 10 mayors uh, in the county, make it a countywide thing. I mean, you know, we, we, whether we like it, no, not whether we like it, I don't mean it that way. I mean, we, we have 37 churches in town, so it is really part of our DNA. So it, it's a part of a thing where um, I think we need to embrace that fact that we have that in a university that's faith based and nonprofits that are faith based, et cetera. So, anyway. Um, so it was good. It was a good event. And we had Amy uh, Wolf was, uh, was the speaker. She was great. To, uh, told us all about this that we're all wearing and suicide prevention and whatnot. So that was good. Um, other things, Joe mentioned a number of the meetings that we've been to and that kind of thing. Things that I'm hearing about just for whatever it's worth, and this uh, goes back to what Karen was saying, sidewalks and safe routes are, are getting a lot of play out there in, in uh, the Berg. Uh, short-term vacation rentals are another one that are getting a fair amount of discussion. Um, and the final one, which could be super fun actually, is Poisdorf, Austria, are one of our sister cities. Um, and there's been talk about trying to increase that exchange, whether uh, commercial, um, you know, educational, or that kind of thing. So, uh, so that's, that's cool there. And if you don't know, they're a wine region. So they're a wine region in Austria. So there's all sorts of linkage there. So. Yeah, right, I know. There's any, any, any number of volunteers that would go visit. Yeah, everybody, everybody's got that one. So, all right, anything else? Anybody else for anything? We have not met yet on, um, on our stuff with West Rock, and we need to do that. So let's, we'll, set up, we'll try to set up a meeting on that and figure out where we can, what we can do on that. Um, anything else? Mm. Yeah, please. I did meet with the uh, Yamhill County Water Solutions Group, which is a Commissioner Kula um, attempt to just talk about water in general, um, people's fears about um, uh, lack of water or just solutions on how to um, increase redundancy, et cetera. Karin and I um, attended that. It was very interesting. It was a little bit more rural focused than urban focused, but still very good to hear about what's going on in the county. Um, and then also uh, talked with Karen, a little bit more about that uh, water redundancy presentation she's going to give, which I think will be really enlightening for all of us. Anything else? Um, well, the only other one I just thought of this now is uh, hiring a little little bit of scuttlebutt about uh, single-use plastic bags um, and plastic straws. So keep that in mind as well. That uh, that may surface at some point. Although I heard there's a there's potential state legislation state out there, isn't there? As a bill, so yeah. we may not hear about it. But anyway, that's uh, what we're hearing. Budget committee starts next week. Oh yes, budget committee. Um, and all of you in the audience, I know you're welcome to budget committee. You're, you're welcome to attend. It's going to be awesome. Please, please attend. Please, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be great. Um, all right. Um, anything else in uh, council committee reports? Hearing none. Okay, I think the last item on our agenda for this evening is actually an executive session. Um, so we will now meet in executive session for the purpose of, where did it go? Uh, pursuant to ORS 192-662-E, real property transactions. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, representatives of the news media and designated staff and other persons will be allowed to attend the executive session. All of other members of the audience will be asked to leave the room. So have a very nice evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. Sure. A, a, a recess would be great.